Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to a 10 sales in approximately 10 minute sales update. Sometimes I do uh, have a tendency to ramble a little bit and end up going over slightly. Um, but we will see in this one, we'll see if I can do this in 10 minutes. So first we've got this board game here, this vintage 1983, a fellow board game by Peter Pan Playthings. Um, now I bought like a large job lot of board games, I think I've got like... I don't know, in the end I think it turned out to be about 15 board games, something like that. And uh, basically this will have cost me about 2 quid in the job lot, maybe not even that. And uh, yeah, this one went for 9 95 plus my postage. I was a little bit, um, I don't know, when I was researching a few of them I was thinking, oh I'm probably not going to get that, that much for this anymore compared to what I used to get for them. But some of the, the markets for the board games are still doing okay. I mean, they're not quite where they were a few years ago, but they're, they're still doing okay. You know, I thought that they would be a little bit lower than they are even now. Or I thought that, like, for example, this one, it didn't take too long to sell. And I thought maybe, uh, you know, this one would take a while to sell. But no, it didn't really. I mean, 9 95 plus my postage there. Maybe, you know, a couple of years ago, you might have been able to get closer to that 14 99 you know 12 99 14 99 for this but you know it's not gone down huge it's not like a huge decrease in value so i don't know maybe some of the board game markets are slightly are getting slightly less saturated maybe there's not as many people talking about them and stuff like that and things are returning a little bit to normal but you know a lot of these board games are always going to say quite saturated because these are the things that a lot of resellers end up talking about and when so many different resellers end up talking about them a market's going to become saturated, you know, it doesn't take tens of people to actually, you know, saturate a market or whatever, so, yeah, you know, I was, I was pleasantly surprised that I could sell this pretty quick, and, you know, I was happy to at least get a tenner out of it, so, yeah, that was quite um, a nice uh, little sale there. Next, we've got these, uh, we've got a couple of newspapers, it was a multi-order for two newspapers, uh, we've got this Vintage Kennedy Assassinated, Daily Mirror, 23rd of November 1963, 9.95 plus my postage on this one, I basically um, have got, like, my god, I've, I must have like um, 400 to 500 pounds worth of newspapers listed and I got a, a huge box of them for 10 pound plus commission at the auction. It was absolutely insane. On some of the newspapers I'm pricing quite... Uh, I, w I would say more aggressively than competitively, just to kind of get a lot of them sold and stuff, because I don't really mind taking a little bit less, because I've got so many of them on, I've got such a huge value, such a huge profit out of that job lot, that, you know, I'm happy just to get the sales in, and get some decent money out of that, that job lot, really, uh, considering that, you know, as I say, I paid £10 plus commission, and hopefully when all said and done, I can get four or 500 quid out of them, I'm more than happy with that. So a lot of these new newspapers are selling pretty quick. I, um, I think, um, I think I've sold about seventy or eighty quid's worth so far, something like that. Uh, I think this was one of the first sales actually. So this uh, Kennedy assassinated, and then this also vintage the killer autograph John Lennon Daily Mail collectible newspaper for nineteen ninety five on this one. Free postage, a little bit more desirable newspaper this one. You know, if I wanted to wait. I could put this on for 30 quid, you know, I, I, I am aware that, you know, I could put this higher, pitch it higher, someone would come along, you know, after a few months or whatever and, and buy it, but I want these things out, I want some good turnover on these things, I'm not, I'm literally in them for like less than 10 pence, or like, well, basically like 10 pence each or whatever, so I'm just happy just to get these out, get them gone, get them gone, um, so yeah, 19.95 on that one, uh, as I say, from like 10, 15 pence, whatever, in investment something like that so yeah really really good on those two so that was a nice little multi-order um i am finding it a bit of a challenge to pack these because i don't necessarily want to fold them over or anything like that um so what i'm trying to i have got quite you know i get a lot of boxes for free and stuff as well, anyway um so what i'm doing is i'm getting like big boxes and then cutting them right down so that then they're like quite thin because i don't actually well for one i don't think i've got any because uh, these are actually quite big newspapers, actually. I don't think I've actually got a jiffy bag to fit them. And even if I did, I'd have to put in there a very, very strong, uh, rigid piece of cardboard. Maybe even in both sides, just to make sure that does not bend or anything. Because I know, you know... I might be t oh, taking like an over precaution on it, the way I'm packing them, 
But I really do think if a collector's buying these, they will want them in decent condition. Of course, they're not in brilliant, brilliant condition as they are. But, you know, with a big fold in the middle, a collector is not going to like that. So, yeah, I am trying to... The ones that already haven't got folds in, like these ones, I'm trying to make sure I pack them well. There are actually some newspapers I've got on that do already have a significant fold down the middle where they've been folded. So those ones, I'm treating them... Um, you know, in a slightly different way when I'm packing them. But these ones, I want to make sure that they stay as they are. I want the buyer to receive them in the condition that they've uh, obviously been shown here. Um, so, yeah, that's that, that's those two uh, sales there. I don't know whether there's any other... Um, I think I might be one more newspaper sale in this update. I'm not sure. Maybe I didn't put one in. But, um, yeah, next, anyway, we've got some Doctor Who figures. As I mentioned the other week, I think I did anyway. I will need to stock up on some more Doc 2 figures, so that's something I've got to do soon. Um, but yeah, Doc 2 character options, 5-inch figures, these are the clockwork men from, uh, what's it called, Girl in the Fireplace. Madame de Pompadour and all that that episode, really good episode. Uh, 995 plus postage on these two figures. There is a, I think there's a purple suit variant of this figure. So instead of obviously the blue and the black there, he has like a purple suit on. And I think that goes for like 15 to 20 quid or something on his own. Don't quote me on that, I'd have to double check. But I think it's around that, just on his own. So there's always like little variants of these figures that go for decent money, um, you know, as a single figure. Um, but yeah, these two, they don't particularly go for brilliant money on their, on their own but certainly just as uh, you know a pair there I've got some decent money at 10 quid plus post so yeah pretty happy with those there next I've got another multi-order it's quite weird actually well I think I um yeah I did I set up multi buy like um I don't know, um, four or five weeks ago, so maybe that's why I'm getting more multi-quantity orders, I'm not sure. Um, but we've got this Antique JTH Floral, uh, Flora Langton uh, Purple Transfer Printed Plate, um, 9.95 plus postage on that one. Um, antique, now this this was interesting, this one, because I, I listed this as an Antique Masons, which is Masons, uh, Transfer Printed Floral Design Ceramic Serving Meat pl Cake Plate. Now, I didn't know what this was, really. I was only taking a stab in the dark at meat plate, cake plate, that sort of stuff, because it's got a weird, like, ridge in the middle of it. Like, a kind of... You can see it there on the photo. You probably will be able to. There's, like, this kind of... Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a little ridge in the middle of a plate. Um, and that would make it... I don't know. It just didn't seem like quite a meat plate or a serving plate or whatever so I don't know that might not have been a meat plate it might not have been a cake plate well, it probably wasn't a cake plate but I just put cake plate in there uh, in the title but it might not have been a meat plate you know so um yeah I don't know on that one I'm, a, I'm still a little bit um kind of baffled with that one what it what it could have been maybe it was a meat plate you know there, there is a good chance it was a meat plate but I couldn't you know I just couldn't figure out what that little kind of thing was around it in the middle of a plate there or put sort of part way into the plate it is odd but yeah so we bought that one that one and then this one here another uh, masons this was a, a kind of an eared cake plate um we got so I got 19.99 for that plus post Fourteen ninety nine plus post for that, and then nine ninety five plus post for that. However, I did knock some postage off them for a combined postage, um, so you know you can knock a little bit of a postage off that. Um, but yeah, we t I think the total order came in around fifty quid anyway, uh, maybe just slightly less than fifty quid with the postage knocked off. Um, so yeah, it was pretty decent, you know, a nice little order there. Um, and yeah, pretty happy with that one. I made sure to pack them well. I got a nice big, uh, you know, double-walled cardboard box. Made sure there was plenty of big bubble in there. You know, I like I like talking people through how I'm packing these items on the sales updates because I know a lot of people ask the question. I get it so so often. How do you pack your ceramics? How do they not break? How you know all this sort of stuff? So um, you know, I, you know, I like explaining that. So yeah, just generally, I just. Basically, if you're unsure with ceramics, just put loads of bubble in there, you know, just put loads of bubble, put loads of newspaper, divide them up with cardboard little slits and stuff, uh, put card, you know, pieces of card over the top before you, you know, maybe you have to fold the box down, you maybe have to cut down the sides of the box because it's too big box, uh, you know, put a sheet of cardboard in there on the top, then fold the sides down, you know, just really pad them in, obviously before you um, put them into the box, maybe put a, a couple of sheets of bubble wrap on the, the bottom layer of the box so and it pads it in from the bottom as well 
there's just so much you can do with these but yeah just generally i would use big bubble wrap opposed to uh you know smaller bubble wrap the smaller bubbles um because obviously with ceramics it, it just protects them a lot more um so yeah that's generally how i do do that but yeah that was a nice little multi-order there so that was a nice little sale uh we've got next the hobbit an unexpected journey legolas greenleaf and gandalf the gray figure so i did a couple of bundles with these figures uh, just to do a few different variations, really, and just get a few of these items out. Um, so, yeah, I got 19 99 plus my postage on these two figures there. If I had done them separately, maybe I could have got an extra five or something on them. Um, but, you know, I was quite happy with just getting them out at, at that price there. Because, um, as I say, I do have quite a lot of these figures. I've still got a few. I think I've still got, like, a small box worth down at my lockup that, obviously, I need to put on. Um, so, you know, like, I've got plenty of these figures to go, and uh, I think I'm in profit on these now, yeah, I will be in profit on these now, um, this sale will be, will have kind of been pretty much all profit, there might have been a very, very small amount of cost left in this sale, like, there might be a couple of quid or whatever that I've, uh, still got cost in them, but yeah, that's pretty much pure profit, and then I've got plenty left to sell, so I'm quite happy just to get these out, so yeah, 19.99 plus my postage on that one, next, some Something really nice. Um, do you remember the oil cap? Oh, I don't know what did I share it in a sales update? Uh, I think I might have shared it in a sales update. Uh, maybe a week or two ago, I shared a cap painting. It was an oil on canvas by like Charles Van der Eichen or whatever, and I got like twenty nine ninety nine plus postage for that. Well, this um, this kind of uh, serving platter or serving tray or whatever came in the same job lot. There was loads of different prints and pictures in a job lot, and then this was in there as well. I paid ten pound plus commission for this job lot, and. Um, yeah, you know, I got thirty nine ninety nine for this tray. So this tray, you know, obviously, well, obviously the cat painting first that sold that put me in profit, and then obviously this tray is now pure profit um, after postage and fees, etc. And I've also got in my lockup that I just don't deal with for whatever reason. I've got the the remaining box of prints and pictures. To be honest, there's probably not a lot of value in there. There might be a couple of them that are like ten, twelve ninety nine plus postage, um, but the rest are probably kind of ones that, you know, I don't know whether it would be worth listing for me, because obviously, you know, I do only te £10 or over items. I don't know whether the kind of, um, you know, those kind of lower value prints would necessarily even match up to that, but we'll see. So, yeah, there's still, there's still going to be a little bit of value left from that job lot. So, yeah, 39 plus protein on that. I did mention on Instagram, because I put this sale on Instagram, but maybe next time if I got something like this, obviously it's uh, by Roundhead Pewter. I've had a couple of bits of Roundhead Pewter before. But if I ever get something like this again, I might just put the price up to 50 quid, just make it around 50 quid, and then I'm sure someone would still uh, buy it for that, um, just to get a little bit extra out of it, really, a little bit more profit. But I'm still uh, very grateful for the, for the profit that I've got on it there. So, yeah, that's that one. And then finally... You remember a week, or, well, well, it'd be a few weeks ago for you now, maybe even a month or so ago, because I've, I've, I keep forgetting I've got all these videos scheduled, and I have to, the, what I'm talking about, I have to give it context in terms of the time that you're going to watch it at, because it's going to be so far ahead in the future, but... Anyway, so about a month ago, or maybe more ago for you guys, I said in a sales update um, about my, uh, basically my dad's friend giving me basically his entire stall, right? Well, this was one of the items off his stall again. Um, I just got, I've got tons of it. Like these superhero squad ones, he gave me tons of it. Like I'm talking a big box full of them. There was probably like 20, like 10, 15, 20 of these, along with like, a box full of other superhero figures, another box full of other random figures and stuff, with a couple of Star Wars figures and everything in there, and then I got another box of children's ponchos, I got another box of random children's summer kind of toys and accessories and stuff, there was so much stuff, it was, it was absolutely crazy, and uh, even just for this one item here, and obviously I, uh, I said in that video that he wouldn't accept any money for them. Um, he just gave me them, like, literally for free. Um, so I don't have anything in these items. And uh, there is a, a, a good amount of value in these items, you know, as a collective. 
um, you know, once of all sold kind of thing. So, yeah, 9.95 plus my postage on that one. This little super Marvel Superhero Squad, Electra and Daredevil, or Electra versus Daredevil or whatever. Um, I'm not too sure, but yeah, uh, pretty cool. It's It was so nice to actually list all this stuff as well, because it was all just brand new in the box. So, it, you know, it's just so easy to to list that sort of stuff, but yeah, anyway, I'll leave it there for this video, guys, um, hope you enjoyed it, if you did, then please do smash the like button down below, um, if you uh, haven't already, then please do subscribe, if you have any comments, questions, or queries about anything you've seen on today's video, then please drop those down below in the comment section, and I will see you in the next one, so I'll see you very soon, guys.